Hey, hey can mean anything. Hey can mean anything. Are we ready to record? Are we recording? Dude, we've been recording. We're recording. What's up, everybody? Podcast time? What's up? We've been recording. We have no we had no clue we were recording because all of our red lights are gone. And that's dangerous. Because you don't know if it's on you. You don't know if it's on you. You have no clue what's happening. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why did you say you twice? Because you need to get <laughs> <laughs> no, like you, you, or me. You don't know who it's on. Y'all ain't getting a Caleb camera. This is podcast with two dudes that need a haircut. I need, yeah, I need a haircut. And I need a shave. This is what happened. All right, let's talk about a shave. I tried to talk back into letting me shave it all off so I can grow it all back. Like, everything. No, no, like that. No, no, just the face. Just the face, all right. So you look childish with no beard? She thinks I look childish and have a bird lip. I hear that there's an app, maybe it's like a Snapchat filter, because Snapchat always has cool filters, mm-hmm. where you can like get into it and see what you look like without a beard. Right. Have you seen that? I'm sure, probably. Yes. Probably? Yeah, it's on oh. Snapchat. All right, cool. I just don't, I don't do Snapchat. I don't want to give people You do Snapchat? No, 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 no. I have two family groups on Snapchat. North That's, family. That means you do Snapchat. No, I don't just be snapping anybody. I don't do Snapchat. At all. Not even on your phone. Not even on my phone. Praise God. That's a good choice. I downloaded TikTok. Okay. Because I thought I was going to start posting reels, like sermon clips or whatever on TikTok. Right. And then everybody was so mean on TikTok. <laughs> so I was like, I can't take this anymore. I deleted it off my phone. It's still on my iPad. So Carson Barfield is supposed to um, be. I was about to say, I don't, I have TikTok, but I don't use TikTok. Unless Becca sends me something. That's the only way I can watch it. Mm-hmm. And. She shows up and your sermon clip show up. That's good, it. good. I'm glad. I'm glad that shows up. <laughs> yeah, because uh, social media ain't no joke, man. It's, it's a wild world out there. It ain't no joke, especially this time of year. I'm sorry. Time of year can get rough because football season. E- football season. Yeah. Politics. <sighs> it's wild out there. Yeah. We Hurricanes. Been- yes. Bad times. Bad times. The Lord is coming soon. Amen. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Do you think when the Lord comes back, what are you giggling about? I just love these conversations. <laughs> I love them. It's one of my favorite. That's, that's why I always love Revelations. When the Lord comes back, like we believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's right. I know it is very pop culture-esque to not believe in a... Um, maybe a rapture in which we think of a rapture, like, oh, bad times are happening and he raptures the church away. But there is definitely coming a second coming of Christ where he calls his church to be with him in the air. Yes. Scripturally, it's hard to deny that, right? Yes. So sometimes I wonder, okay, this is this is like rabbit trail, like, like crazy, okay? I wonder. Are we about to get canceled? Yeah, probably. Pro- not canceled, but I'm going to confuse a lot of people because I don't have good theology on this. All right. Um, but like, people are like, "Hey, what about cremation? Right. What about tattoos? What okay. about you know all of these sorts of things when it comes to the dead in Christ are going to rise? Mm-hmm. But you're cremated, so right. So there, there, there's going to be some sort of dead in Christ rising, obviously. Our spirit, our soul, you know, whatever those those sorts of concepts, but we believe in the bodily resurrection. So, you know, what does that look like? How does that how is that put together? What about people who are cremated? You know, I was talking with somebody the other day who wants to get a tattoo, and they were like, you know, you know, does this affect my eternity? And I'm like, well, your body's going to decay. It's going to it's cremation is the same concept as your body decay, and I mean, it's just doing it way faster. You know, it's doing it in a moment rather than you know, over five years, you know? And so anyways, just some concepts that are running around in my head, even with that moment. You have any thoughts? I have so many, so many, none you want to talk about on podcast. No, no, honestly, it's, (laughs) I, 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 so, so growing up, we used to, you know, my family were not the biggest proponents of cremation. You know, it was, I don't want to be no closer to the fire and I have to be. You know what I mean? Makes sense. That type of concept. But then my mom started working in, um, what is it, end of life stuff? Uh, hospice. Hospice yeah. care. Hosp- she was a hospice nurse. And to- she saw so many families that 
where a, a cremation would be three hundred dollars and a funeral would be ten thousand yeah. dollars. She just saw the devastation of the financial side of things on top of all the grief and everything. Mm -hmm. And so she, you know, her, us as a family, you know, we begin the conversation where even the last few years where it's been like, Hey, if it gets that time. I'm cool. Just put me in an urn somewhere. Get me around your house. But you know, she, and we joke about it, but like her whole concept changed my dad, you know, as a family, we've seen that, that change a little bit, but then you really start thinking about the people who are like, no, you don't do that. But if, Every person who's ever died, their bodies aren't there their anymore. Their bodies are it's gone. gone. It's gone. It's, it's dust. My dad died in 2018. If we were to open up my dad's casket right now, it would just be bones left. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure somebody would be like, oh, the liver takes seven years to decay. You know, whatever. Right. Right? Okay, maybe, maybe there's parts of him that are left. Mm -hmm. But essentially, he's gone. His mm -hmm. bones. When you get, when you get cremated... Same thing. Yeah. They actually just grind up your bones at right. the end, right. put them in the urn. Right. Or the bones are too big, they just throw them in trash. But yeah, that's some insider information from my brother at, um, I won't say where he works. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. No, I we, should, should we should stop I, having I, this I, conversation. I, I, you just protected your brother because he works I've always looked for an opportunity to find a way to get anime in a podcast. And I, I, you know, I think I got a chance. Okay, explain to me what anime is. Anime is basically Japanese cartoons, essentially. Okay, I, I think that's a base basic for for those of you who are super anime fans. I'm sorry, but I'm not a true anime fan. I only watched Dragon Ball Z growing up. But there is a listen, Dragon Ball Z. Listen, I'm a connected though. Okay. I'm a connected though because we're talking about. Cremated bodies, right? Cremated bodies. Then Jesus comes back. Bodily re resurrection. How does that work? Well, in and Dragon, Dragon Ball, Ball Z, Z, there was a villain. Boo. Don't That's add. a bad name. Yeah, it was terrible. But doesn't it, seem very villainous. Yeah. When when you really, like, if, if, if you ever see a picture of him, it, it's hilarious because okay. it looks like a gumball. But anyways, there's an explosion that takes place, and you watch his body disintegrate. Mm -hmm. But then it starts forming Boom. back together because of the way he's created and he forms completely. So how cool would it be? Trumpet sounds, have you know, whatever. All of a and all of a sudden you just see all the dust coming together and forming. And it's cool how we can make things spiritual. You know, like yeah. whenever I was young, we'd watch He-Man. You ever watch He-Man? Yeah. He-Man, uh, master of the universe. Skeletor. And <laughs> He-Man. Um, anyways, he, uh, he, he, he he would he would have this sword if you've never seen it, and he would hold it up and he'd say, "I have the power," and this lightning bolt would hit him from heaven. Yep. And I promise you, I I won't say I was taught this, <laughs> but my understanding of what was happening was that was the Holy Ghost coming on that man. Mm -hmm. And that this was the anointing of God, and he went from this weak little prince Listen, to this, this strong, mighty warrior, and then would, in the anointing, shoot it at his scaredy cat and turn him into battle cat. Mm -hmm. Like, like I was... So, yeah, it's cool how we can turn cartoons I, I spiritual. I love this conversation, because in Dragon Ball Z, you have your base form, right? Your base form, and he had black hair, jet black hair. But then... He who? Dragon Ball? Goku. But when he would go Super Saiyan, he would get gold hair. But then he could go Super Saiyan 2, so he'd get sanctified. And then he'd get Super Saiyan 3, and he'd get the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. And so in my mind, we'd be worshiping, and if you were saved, you were just a regular Super Saiyan. <laughs> if you were sanctified, you are Super Saiyan 2. But if you had the Holy Ghost, you, you got the full deal. You ready to go. So That's um, wild. Teaser. How often do you watch Dragon Balls? Now, not as much. What is not as much? Now, you watch it. Once a week, once a day, once a month. Like if it hits you right, you know, you're like, oh man, let me let me go back and watch a clip or two on YouTube or something. I don't I don't sit down and watch. Oh, I'm gonna watch these 20 minute episodes over and over. I mean, I've watched it however many times over my life. I've played in the media. I've read. The so it's done. Like it's not like new new Dragon Ball. Every now out. and again, they'll come up with a new manga, a new arc, or whatever. But it hadn't lately. I'm sorry. <laughs> So this is not the pod. For <laughs> Everybody just turned us off. They're yeah. like, please talk about Jesus or leadership or family or something. Stop That's talking right. about Dragon Balls. So I did not know it was Dragon Ball Z. I thought it was just Dragon Balls. I, I've, I've tried to help you, but I think you're, you're a committed individual. Help. 
I am. I am committed. I told him at lunch today. It's a true story. I, I talked about failing English 101, and I failed English 101 on the same exact semester that I passed Chinese 1. Mandarin 1, Mandarin, whatever it was. Yeah. That's impressive. It's, it, I was so bad at my my language of origin right. that I failed it, mm-hmm. but was able to pass a brand new language that I'd never talked before. But you had the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's right. I have the power. That's right. It's awesome. Yeah. So um, we're launching campuses. We're doing this thing, man. We are. How, did you? So one of the things I get with Joseph, and you're going to roll your eyes and say, don't talk about this. One of the things I get with Joseph <laughs> is your fulfillment in this season of your life. I love it. I mean, you can't don't say it like that because people won't believe us. They'll make you think I'm kicking you under the table. No, I love that. I didn't. I didn't realize that was a conversation piece for other people. Like they are shocked. I, it's it's a it's a fascinating conversation for me. When I moved here, it was a fascinating confirm- conversation for me. People that I respected, that I looked up to. People. I mean, I found out even recently, in the last two weeks, people that I love and respected who said, "What is he doing? He is giving up pastor." And and, and it's and and again, it's not. <laughs> I don't want to misspeak because. You know, people get, you know, upset about stuff. I I had a wonderful opportunity where I was. I love sure, where I was and sure. what I did. For sure. But it's apples and oranges. On apples and oranges. But I cannot compute how people can see what I'm doing is lesser, if that's the word, than what I was doing just simply because I'm not the lead pastor. Like, I, there, I, I have a unique opportunity to right now, currently where we're situated today to influence six campuses of ministry, six churches, six ministry teams across the country. Now, Mm -hmm. as we grow into Southern Illinois, beginning of the year and people, I can't believe he gave up pastor. What was he thinking? (laughs) I I just, I don't understand that conversation. You didn't preach for about a month straight on purpose. You make your own preaching schedule. Yep. I don't think people know that. Yep. You make your preaching schedule. When's the next time you're preaching? Preaching in general? This Sunday. No, well, no, this Sunday I'm going to Illinois, so Pastor John is going to take care of me. Next Sunday you preach yep. somewhere. 13th Toby? traveling to Society Hill. Society Hill, preach your homecoming. Yep, homecoming. Um, then after that you're preaching the next Aner. week, Aner. You know, yep. so mm-hmm. so there's, there's, there, you make your own preaching schedule. Right. Never once have I said to you, you don't need to preach there. Correct. You've said to me, I don't need to preach here because I've preached here and here, and I need somebody else to preach here. Correct. I've never said that to you. Correct. So you make your own preaching schedule, and in making your own preaching schedule, you have done your best through this process to um, protect campus ministry. Yes. Which I I honor that and appreciate that. But in that, um, there have been people that have wondered— is Joseph feeling fulfilled in this season of his life? Right, correct. And it is so strange to me. Yes. And then when I say things like, I, I am so fulfilled. It's like, so strange to me. I literally had a day in mystery. This happened in the last two months where on a Tuesday morning, <laughs> I got up at 5 a.m., yeah. drove to the airport, mm-hmm. got on a plane, mm-hmm. flew to Atlanta, got on another plane, Flew to Illinois. Well, no, St. Louis. Missouri, yeah. But yeah. No, I said St. Louis. Uh, no, it's right. Yeah, St. Louis. Yeah. Dr- flew to St. Louis. Flew by Cardinals Stadium. I mm-hmm. mean, drove by Cardinal Stadium. Yeah. Drove to Southern Illinois. Got to walk around a church. And because we had multiple campuses of experience, got to start making mental notes. Oh, we're going to put this here. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Here. Knowing that I didn't have to stress about budget. Knowing I didn't have to worry about Oh my gosh! How are we gonna pay the bills here? How are we going? You know what I mean? Like using wisdom. Because I'm the one the, walking around stressing. Right? Yeah, about I let you stress that. I just dream. <laughs> and you say, "Not right now, <laughs> yes, sir." Okay, right now. I just get to put it all on paper yeah. and just vision and dream, and you know, it, it get to go to this whole, whole new place. Then we packed it up, drove back to the airport, flew home. I got back in my bed at like eleven o'clock that night, and that was one day of mystery. And then Wednesday morning, got up, got prepared because we had another campus to get to Wednesday night, and we yeah. had events going on, and we had things going on. You're like. How cool is that? I get to do that for a living for the kingdom of God. Like mm-hmm. I don't, it is, it is exhilarating. Now, neither one of them cases was I in the pulpit. Now, if you'd asked me that two years ago, I said, you're crazy. 
Yeah. I preach. That's just what I do. That's what I do. I sing. I am, I am a pulpiteer. Give me a microphone. Now I'm like, if I get the microphone, great. I, I feel like I'm confident in my ability to do what God's anointed me to do in those moments, but I don't think my anointment is limited by an action. Amen. He, he's my pursuit. Amen. And, and, and his kingdom is. And so if it better suits his kingdom today for me to not have a microphone, I'm okay with that. Yeah. And and we both we have both grown in this area because even in campus ministry, you know, part of the struggle of campus ministry is the battle for unity. Yeah. And the battle for, you know, not creating division of this this little church over here doesn't like what this church over here and this doesn't like this and this. and all of a sudden you're creating this, you know, tidal wave of division and you're like, "Hey, you know, and then all of a sudden this ministry over here says we don't want to be a part of you and we're going to step out and do our own thing. Mm-hmm. And that is the fear of campus ministry. Excuse me. Yeah. Right? Like this is this is the 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 caution flag that everybody waves of campus ministry. Here goes why this you got to be cautious. We've seen it. We've watched it happen firsthand in our in our ministry. Um prior to you getting it getting here, we watched it happen. Uh, we we've heard the rumblings of it even you know in campus one, mm-hmm. um, and so so you and I both have grown um, knowing that that is a thing. And you know the other day I I even got to the place to where I'm like, man, I don't. It's not about Jamie. It's not about Palmetto Point Church. It's about the name of Jesus being lifted high. And I I get that. I always knew that, but sometimes you're trying so hard to protect the church name, the church culture. Mm-hmm that you 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 almost keep a, a strong thumb on everything in an attempt to keep the church culture unified and if truly if we're if if Jesus Christ is at the center then it should be unified and yes. so so both of us have grown in this process and this journey of campus ministry and i think people who who would look at you and say i just don't think he can feel um I don't think he can feel maybe validated in this season. Maybe mm-hmm. it's a good word. I don't know how he can. I've never once told you you couldn't go preach somewhere. No. People I, ask you to go preach all the time. You go preach anywhere you want to. Mm-hmm. Never once told you you couldn't do that. Right. Um, I've never once stopped you from, you know, continuing to press into that side of you. Mm-hmm. But I also understand there are a lot of other sides of you that have the potential to be great that aren't great. Right, no doubt. That need whooping into shape. Mm-hmm. And as we are whooping those things into shape, sometimes, um, you know, it takes a concerted effort to say, hey, I'm going to focus on this area. And God gives you this special grace to say, I can feel really um, – it's, it's exhilarating to be able to do this. Yeah. Without having to do this thing that I used to think was so exhilarating, you know? And so anyways, this is really cool concept as, as we have grown in the campus ministry concept. Yeah. And again, for me personally, the sacred season, that first six months here, I got here on August one, my first day in the office in 2022. And so that following January of 2023, you're looking at a situation where I, I, I didn't realize this until I didn't have it that I had gotten to a place where my spiritual identity was found in my performance. Mm-hmm. Now performance was taken away from me. Yeah. All I'm called to do for this month or two period while we were getting things off the ground was to come to church and worship. I almost went crazy. Mm-hmm. I didn't have some, I, I didn't almost have fired you. I almost yeah. fired you during this. Season. True story. True yeah. story. And we don't and told talk, you we don't talk about divorce. We don't talk about divorce. We don't talk about divorce. If you want a divorce, <laughs> we'll divorce. Yeah. But I'll talk the next about time you say it, that's right. Divorce is happening. Yeah, I will help you. I will help. It you, was a right? gracious divorce. I will help you. Yeah. I will help you find yeah. where you want to go, where you yeah. need to go. But but we're not going to throw this word, this this For divorce sure. word, out and have it hanging over our head every day. Right. No, we're no, not no. going to do that. And and so once once there was that moment of fasting and prayer and realizing that, man. I've lost who I am because I tied who I was to what I was doing. So like, Lord, forgive me. Like there was a whole 20 something years that I lived life before I started yeah. preaching. It was a whole, you know, you know, several years before I started singing consistently. And, you know, so 
and in those moments, God was still just as real in my life then. I, you know, and so it, it, it restored the focus of what it needed to be on. And, and then when opportunities come and when those moments come, we, it's just a, it's just an extension of who I am in him and, and the role I play in this season, but he's the goal. Yeah. I was talking with, um, Justine a couple of weeks ago after a worship practice and there were a few of them standing around and she, you know, mentioned kind of, kind of her growth in worship. And I said to her, um, how much I appreciate the way she worships on the platform on Sunday when she's not in the platform on Sunday and she's in her seat, she's yeah. worshiping the exact same way. Right. Because she's not getting in the, in the, in the pulpit and saying, let me perform because this is mm-hmm. what you're needing of me in the moment. Yeah. No, no, this is her lifestyle. This mm-hmm. is who she is as a worshiper. And so I, I appreciate that from people. It's, it's me. I mean, it's who I am. You, yep. you've seen me at camp meetings when I'm sitting in the very back, I'm a worshiper. When I'm on yep. stage, I'm a worshiper. When it's my turn to preach, I'm a worshiper. I'm, I'm gonna, it doesn't matter. If, it doesn't matter where I'm at. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive in in those moments. I'm gonna I've give seen my best. you worship yourself out of frustration mm-hmm. because two sides of your, your, not flesh, it's who you is, who it's who you are as a leader, but in a moment of maybe a lack of excellence or issue and get frustrated, like, you know what, my response to this is not to devalue all the rest of this, it's I'm going to just worship my way through it because what you preach, you know, a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago here, you know, and when we launched our campuses where we can get a lot of things Got wrong. Got a lot of things wrong. But the one thing, you know, lives are going to be, he, he's going to be lifted up. Yep. These are things that matter. And so, yeah, I agree totally. It, it's It's an extension of who you are. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. Very well, c- campus ministry in and of itself is very interesting. Um, you met with a guy who told us the way we would do it would never work, mm-hmm. and the way we the way I feel like probably a year and a half ago you came into my office and you said, "If you could dream, what does what does campus ministry look like to you?" Because we had tried like three different things during that time, yeah. and I kept saying. I've never been to a campus, so I have absolutely no clue what it should look like. And in my head, I didn't really, I wasn't really able to, to formulate what I was really saying. So anyways, I I kind of came back to you after some time in prayer. And I said, if you were to ask me what I desire from campus ministry, I desire to see, you know, little church buildings that were once the staple in the community, Mm -hmm. these you know, these little brick buildings or these little, you know, steepled churches that used to be so prominent in the area, in the community that are now being shut down or have five or six people attending them. I would love to see us go in there, breathe life back into them, refresh them and allow them to be again, um, a lighthouse in their community. Right. And you kind of looked at me and you kind of sighed like you do. And you said, that's completely different than yeah, campus ministry. I about to say because in my defense, in that was, I need you to become the campus expert. Well, I was by yeah, no yeah. means a campus Cause, expert because no, n- neither one of us has. We have no, <laughs> so we no clue. Yeah. So I dove into every podcast, every every seminar, every book I can yeah. read, and I started looking at you know like the gentleman I talked to in every book, every seminar, every conversation, every leader I sat down with. Yeah, you know, you're not launching campuses. This isn't what you're doing. You 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 you're. You're launching churches. You're, yeah, you're, you're planting ch- churches. You're planting churches, and you you can't plant churches like that and expect them to be a campus. It's, and I'm a you know, church planter. And I was like, and I was like, well, it, you're a church planter. Yeah, you're right. So so we warred against some of that, but then I feel like we finally got to that place of the answer is yes. And who knows? We may get down the road, and it might not work. But I do know this that it feels like that God's honored it, that we've had a supernatural grace. We have, I feel like the people that God has put around us to help facilitate the places that he's given us keys to. It's supernatural. It, it makes it a lot easier when, when he's the one putting it all together and we're just trying to be stewards of it. And Thomas Granger. Yeah. Incredible. Mike Termano. Awesome. Sampson. Awesome. Ahmed. Yeah. Um, incredibly uniquely gifted treasures to this ministry yep because they're exactly what you would be looking for in a one part church planter one part campus pastor one part you know this this unique hybrid system that we're putting into place mm-hmm. even what's happening in southern illinois uh, 
you know, I, I'll say his first name. I won't, I won't give all the beans away, but we got a guy named Justin that we're in communication with. And it's been like this, the conversation, you called me after having yeah. a conversation with him and you're like, pastor, this is like, this is like everything you want. And I should have known better, but in my mind, this was a Hail Mary. This yeah. was, was, I was like, okay, Lord, Southern the Lord, that's cool, but. No way this is going to work. First thing we have to answer. <laughs> one thing that's universal in our model and yeah, every model, model is who's going to be the king of the Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who's going to lead us? Who's going to lead it? And and so then then when those conversations were lined up, it's like, I mean, God's so much bigger than we realize. Yeah. I mean, like we know that, but like you, you, we sometimes, for me specifically, you know, you see the small steps and God's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm over here. I, yeah. I got this. Trust me to build my church, you know. Yeah. I just need you to be obedient. And you're like, yes, sir. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, and and then, like you said, it takes a unique person to do it. It does to, to to be a campus pastor in our system, and and to to see the people the Lord's put around. Even at Jay Rubin, the, you know, yeah. having Don Marie and oh, Marcus right here in the house. Perfect. Yeah, and then seeing the way God's blessing Punto de Gracia and the yeah. season with Pastor Caesar. I mean, it's just we're we're, we're Don Marie being able to look at that group of guys and say, yeah. "Hey, I believe in you." And yeah. they're like, "You don't believe in me," and she's like, "I literally." married to somebody yeah who was in your same spot yeah i know what god can do in you it's yeah. a game changer yeah pastor caesar and punto de gracia and and honestly we the hope is for us to have a punto in inside of every campus yeah. that we launch eventually yeah. um but he's such a i mean they're they're just blowing up yeah. they're just it's it's incredible yeah so anyways really really cool um what God is doing inside of campus ministries and inside of our church. And it all started because Joseph said yes to the calling of God upon his life. I've given you orders. Why won't you acknowledge them? Surrender to, yeah. you know, I, I, <laughs> I remember having the conversations of God has given me vision. How am I going to surrender my vision to your vision? Some of these while you were dying, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> When I was in the in the hospital with COVID, Joseph didn't know I was dying with COVID, and he's texting me, and I was answering his text. Oh, God. He just found that out this past week. I did. No, he, he knew whenever I got out, I was like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. I just want to let you know I was dying of COVID. Yeah. You're like, bro, why are you answering my text? I started seeing those videos of people praying outside, and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> what is going wild. on? It's wild, man. Oh. Caleb, you ever think about being a campus pastor one day? Is that something that's ever... um. Technically, both of those words are in my title. True. That's true. Online campus pastor. So, does that mean you got to figure out this side of techie stuff as well? Hey, might need to. We definitely need it on all the campuses. It's definitely a, a, a gift to have. If the Lord has that for me. And you believe in me enough to send me one day? You, on the left, not on the right. My which, left. Which, which one? I'm about to say. We... My father. No. Oh, all right. Okay. Then. Sure. That's all chose. I told you yesterday. Yesterday? Two days? Yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe this morning. I don't know. Can't keep up. Days just kind of do this now. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, you know, maybe when he's 24, 25, he's got a few more years of growth in front of him, but. Definitely, in that uh, pot, boy. definitely in that crock pot cooking. It's it, so cool, I'm like slow cooked chicken. Like I, I don't want to minimize the spiritual aspect of what we're doing. I've been playing a lot of college football, right? You know, if we're just going all nerd this podcast, and I'm now at the place in my Clemson dynasty where it's all my recruits on the field, and I get to see that. You know what I mean? I, so, so then when we're having these conversations, it's like you're right. You, you, you're. Asking Lord to give you discernment in every conversation because I know keys are coming. Mm -hmm. I know doors are going to be open. Yeah. So, Lord, if, if you're going to give us a key, then you already have somebody that's right. somewhere that's ready to lead that. And so then you're looking at him like, who's a prospect? Who who, mm -hmm. who who is in the pipeline? Who is it that God's stirring up that gift inside of? It? And then, God, am I being a good steward of the relationships around me mm -hmm. so that that way we can help identify those things? It's, an, it's exciting. It's a, yeah, I mean, you have people watching this podcast. Yeah that watch every single week, yeah. that never would ever think of themselves as being in ministry or or submitting their life to this being my life. Maddie and I talked about that a few podcasts ago, where this is life. Like, it's not like, oh, 
this is what this is like your job. No, no, no. This is your life. Mm-hmm. This is everything about your life. Um, but there's people watching this podcast that are are going to be huge parts in campus ministry in the future and surrendering their life, you know, in some form or fashion to okay, I didn't know this was a thing in North Myrtle Beach or in Garden City or, you know, in you know, where wherever, wherever can't wherever keys come in the future. I didn't know this was gonna be a thing. But if it is, I want to be a part of it there. You yeah. know, it was so cool for me the other week. I think I sent it to you on, on Facebook when I was posting my story when we were at Clemson for lunch weekend and a guy went to high school with in Sherall, South Carolina, qu- commented on my story and said, can you put one in Spartanburg? It's the fastest growing city right now in the country. Yep. We need one here. And I haven't talked to him since high school. But he said, but then message me, man, proud of what you've been watching, you guys, whatever. And you're like, but that kind of goes to that social media thing that we talk about. You just never know who's out there. You never know who's watching this right now. Yeah. Comment and let us know where you want us to launch campus. (laughs) It's a poll. No, no, we'll do them all. Wherever you say, just comment, let us know where you want us to launch campus. We'll do them all, but. My whiteboard's going to have to grow. Your whiteboard better grow. Yeah. It better grow. Speaking of college football. I think my Final Four is still intact. Well, specifically the one that y'all picked on the worst. South Carolina? Carolina? The U. Oh, now the U. Yeah, they look good. I can't, I can't take away from that. They got the help of some ACC refs, but they're there. I'm pulling up top 25. I think Miami's in the top 10 right now. Yep, Miami's in the top 10. And listen, here's the cool thing about this year. Technically, nobody's team is out of it yet, really. It's Except Florida State. Well, yeah. Except Florida, Florida State's Florida out. Florida State. I'm Alabama's saying that number one. Played. Did not expect that. that was, I did not expect the coaching change. Alabama's to, number one? Texas was number one earlier in the week. Uh, this is AP News, so I don't know. Maybe this is a different But they beat Georgia. Yeah, they're up three to number one. Gotcha. Texas is number two. Again, my poll may be wrong. This may not be the accurate I think, poll. I think you got the right one. Um, I expected Texas. I said if South Carolina loses first couple of weeks, then Texas was my fourth team. Right. So, um, South Carolina may be out of it. They may not. Just gotta make top twelve. Just gotta make top. We may we, we gotta still finish, be in it. We gotta finish second. Yeah. Texas, Alabama, Texas, Ohio State. Of course, we expected that one. Here's the one I didn't expect, and I t- I'm telling you, I watched the game. They blew me away. Tennessee. Yeah. I did not expect that. Yeah. We beat them last year. Two years ago. Two years, Two years ago. ago. We beat them, and yeah. I didn't. They look They look good, but, man, they. Whew. Georgia, they lost to Alabama. Way better game than I anticipated. Not instant classic. Oregon, nah. Penn State, nah. Penn State will blow it at some point. The U. Yeah. They use A's Number eight. hanging around. And here's the unique thing about the setup. It's whoever wins the ACC gets an automatic bid. Automatic bid. And so, even if they were ninth or tenth or whatever, no they're, they're top four seed. Missouri, nah, you'll lose. Michigan, nah. USC, nah. Ole Miss, nah. LSU, nah. Fourteen, Notre Dame. Yeah, they're not gonna lose again. They have Notre Dame ranked ahead of Clemson. Yes, of Disrespect. course. Disrespect. Of course. Clemson's fifteen. Sixteen, Iowa State, BYU, Utah, Oklahoma, Kansas State, Boise State, Louisville, Indiana. Illinois, UNLV. UNLV's ranked? 25th. 4 and up. Great Mountain West. Excuse me. There you go. Mountain West Conference. There you go. So, so, what the heck is that? So, Texas, Georgia. Are we just going to ignore that? Your previous? Plane went over, buddy. It was, was Texas, Georgia. Texas, Georgia. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Carolina was your original. No, Texas. No, Texas took South Carolina spot. Oh, you've already <laughs> traded out South Carolina. Yeah, I've already traded them out. I, I gave myself that leeway. First okay. few weeks, I told you I could do that. Okay, first few no, weeks. no, totally. You get Texas, to Georgia, Notre Dame, and the U. I got to stick with mine. I, stick I with still mine. feel good about mine. My South Carolina pick, I felt really good about, but that LSU game was not what we were expecting. Yeah, I don't. I just wish they'd be good. Just like maybe like four years in a row, just give a good run. Just be good. We just need, we need 2010 to 2014 one more time. No, better than that. I just want to. I want to. I want to win something. As a part-time Carolina fan, because Becca was Becca a Carolina, Carolina fan, fan before she quit football. Mm. After no, she's she a Carolina fan. It, it South Carolina is the most interesting team to watch. They will play Old Dominion, and you're thinking 
they going to lose. about to win. Yeah. They're, they're going to win. And then they'll go to Kentucky, who Whoop em. was tit for tat with Georgia, and then Whoop beat, who was it that beat the other week? Akron. Oh. Akron. No, 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 LSU. Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky beat, um, um, Kentucky. Kentucky beat last week. They Ole beat Miss. Um, Ole Miss. So yeah. they beat Ole Miss. And so that Kentucky team, and they dog walked them. Yeah. You know? And it's, it, it, and then played, should have beat LSU. Beat if LSU. our quarterback hadn't gotten hurt, we would have destroyed LSU. Yeah. Um, but even still, we we had plays that yeah, we could have beat LSU. Or, you know. But then this week, we'll play Ole Miss. Ole Miss, and we'll get stoned. You never know. You never know. You never know what kind of Carolina team showing yeah. up. But they'll beat Alabama this year. You know what I mean? It's just yes, like that. Where you're that's like, how we are. Yes. It's so confusing. That's how we are. I saw the, um, uh, when we were there for game day, they had like the, the how sandstorm began. That's super cool. You should watch that. Yeah. That was super neat. Yeah. No. You know what that means? Mm-hmm. Been to the Carolina game? Oh, yeah. Carolina night's fun. It's nice. So much fun. Nice. Um, couple couple of your buddies have uh, um, season, season tickets. tickets. Yeah, couple of our buddies, but yeah, we'll call them your buddies. I Make it feel like you have like I appreciate big it. rollers in yeah. your, in your life. Yeah, I totally get to go to like Akron. <laughs> I don't know. I did. I did pull the Florida. Uh, the um, oh shoot, Texas A and M game that nice. year. Nice. You got pulled out of a hat or something. No, no, no. They just it just worked out to where they had a ticket that night. Nice. It was fun. Super cool. Um so if anybody watching this wants to like be involved in campus ministry, what should they do? Email me at, at Joseph at Palmetto Point Church. How do you spell Joseph? J O S E P H. E P H. All right. Yeah. How do so, I spell it? <laughs> Joseph. J O E S P H. That dyslexia be Joe. Yeah. That's probably why Joseph. <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> Just, just, that makes sense to me. Listen, hey, I'm with you. English 101, what my strongest just emails don't work. You say that Mandarin for me, Joseph? (laughs) No, no, um, well, yeah, or text me, message me on social media. I'm serious, like, I'm I'm we're ready, I'm in this place. I'm ready, I'm excited to have a conversation. My wife walked in, we were at Southern Illinois, she walked in, we were all sitting there in the sanctuary, we thought. How in the world are we going to pull this off? My wife walks in. My wife is my discernment. I'm telling you, she is my discernment. And brutally she walked, honest. Brutally honest brutally. about everything. Correct. Walks in and says, I feel good about it. Let's do it. No doubt. That's how I said. And we all went. Again, after we turned and burned from 5 a.m. to get yeah. there by 2. and we're Hungry. Around, we ain't had lunch yet. No. We had stopped at a truck stop to eat lunch. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like we did this cool, like, oh, man, yeah. let's go try well, the we're here to say, some bar- barbecue. barbecue. No, no. 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 We stopped at a truck stop. <laughs> and, and we got, like, microwavable stuff. <laughs> no doubt. I got, like, um, I don't remember what it was. Anyways, Tony got something nasty. I can't remember. So, and Maddie walks in. She says, I like it. Let's do it. Yep. Yep. We're like, what? So, we're doing this thing. No doubt. So if you're interested in being part of campus ministry, let Joseph know. Let just Joe know. Yes. And uh, let's do this thing. Let's do it. All right. Love y'all. Thanks for hanging out. God bless. Peace. Peace out. Let's go. Click here or there. Click here next episode. Click there. Subscribe. Click here for the next thing. Peace.